Hello and welcome to this mini class about personal finance and saving. My name is Samuel. I'm from Ethiopia. I have an MBA degree in finance. I'm a researcher, lecturer, and business consultant. So on today's mini class, we'll talk about personal budgeting, personal finance, personal saving. So as a young entrepreneur, it is very crucial and it's very important to consider your saving techniques to develop a very good saving habit a very uh, systematic saving uh, mindset that can help you in your future investment and for that you need to have a very good personal betting, budgeting and uh, personal income saving techniques so Basically, on this uh, session, we will cover three uh, concepts, three uh, major topics. On the three major topics, we will talk about the steps, how we can do it. The first major topic that we will cover is about personal budget. So, you need to have a budget. For example, uh, if you consider the government of your perspective, countries or the companies, the profit or non-profit companies, all of them have a budget by the beginning of the year, which we call it the physical year or the financial year. And then at the end of the financial year, they will review their budgets. So a budget as a financial plan that you will uh, do your finances to. So for that, a young entrepreneur has to have a budgeting uh, that he or she should follow in pursuing their goals and their uh, purpose. That's the first one. Second major objective that we'll cover on this mini class is about how to save money from our income. We will have some periodic income. It can be uh, a monthly income or it can be uh, accumulated income that can come from a hourly wage or something like that. So how do we do it? What's, what are the steps that we can follow in doing so? So in continuation, the last but the, 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 the third major topic that we're go going to cover on this mini class is going to be a rule that can be applied in doing the saving. That is called the balanced money formula or we can call it the 15, 13, 20 award. How is it working? We'll, we'll, we'll see it shortly. So first thing is first we'll talk about budget. Now as I, as I, as I said uh, when we talk about budgeting we're, 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 we're planning our finances. We're, we're, we're trying to understand how much we're getting and how much we're spending and how much should we put aside and for what? So for that, we need to have a budget. So for a, for a, for a personal budget, there are steps that we can follow to, to, to develop a very concrete uh, personal budget. Now these steps will start, the first step will start by knowing your net income. Now here, we, when we said about the net income, you need to know the residual income the net income, the amount that will come to your pocket or to your bank account. How much is coming in, coming into your account. So you need to know your income and you need to recur the sources of the incomes. What are the sources? Sometimes it may not be one source. We may have uh, multiple sources of incomes. So, if you have multiple sources of income, then you need to uh, recur to this source of income and from each source of income, how much, is, are you, are, how much are you going, going to get is, has to be recurred. So, here, one thing that I want to highlight is, if you are hobbies, if you have hobbies, then you have to consider changing your hobbies into an additional income source. I mean, you have to develop your hobbies into a habit 
that can give that can bring you an additional income that's the first step knowing your income now after knowing your income the second step is creating a list of expenses now when we talk about a list of monthly or predicate predicate expenses for for simplicity purposes let's talk about monthly budget so you need to list down the expenses that you expect that you will uh, uh, do on the coming months so when we talk about budgeting we're talking about planning so we're talking about the future so for the next month what are the lists that you are expecting uh, to be your expenses now here there are two types of expenses a fixed and uh, variable expenses basically when we said a fixed expenses these are expenses that cannot be avoided this can be uh, expenses that will come every month they will be there and when we say variable expenses this expenses can vary from month to month and some of them can be avoided by some techniques so you have to consider that one. now you know your income and your expenses then you can see you can see the difference between your expenses and then your income now if your income is greater or if you if the difference is positive that means you're okay so you you, you have to think about how you can I mean manage uh, to stay like that or increase the difference but if the difference is negative or that means if your expenses is somehow greater or if the difference is somehow that much not significant then you have to think about how to live within your expenses now you have to review your expenses and make sure that they are in line with your making your monthly uh, making your monthly making now after that the other step the first step is you have to write down your personal financial now what's your goal what's the purpose of doing the budget sometimes you can you can you can take it this one to uh, uh, the first step you can start by setting a, a, your personal financial goal or sometimes by understanding how much you are getting and how much uh, you're spending then you can say how much uh, uh, is uh, I mean you can set your personal goals here now you may have a short term and long term goals now these are the goals that will be the core the core uh, initiations for your saving or for your overall personal budgeting so you have to know what are your short term and long term goals and in doing so you have to prioritize your goals what are the the the, the, the major uh, targets that you need to achieve and in doing so also you have to set a smart goal uh, a smart goal when we say your goal has to be specific it should be measurable it should be achievable it should be realistic reliable and it should be time bounded it has to have a time bounded so when we say the specific if you should know your specific uh, goal and then it should be measurable so that at the end of your the period at the end of the month or at the end of the year you can do some analysis and review and then know where is the problem or where is the uh, the area that can be improved and it should be achievable i mean it, it has to be realistic it should be achieved by you, you it should uh, consider your, your your capacity your your performance and uh, the environment that you uh, you in on it so now after that now you know the goal 
then to reach to the goal you have to set a plan so uh, by using the variable and the fixed expenses you, you have to prepare a plan a plan of action now when preparing the plan of action you have to be realistic and you should set yourself up for success this is something that is that should be highlighted and bolded now you whenever you do the plan and whenever you 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 you're going with the action plan your your plan has to be flexible enough that you can make some adjustments but this adjustment this has to be a driver for your success and once in a while you have to review uh, your budget so that your budget should be the one uh, blueprint that can drive your finance to your goal or to your uh, purpose this is all about uh, budgeting now let's come to the second uh, major topic that will i mean uh, due to some time constraints i will just uh, do the highlighting i will not go in, into deep on the uh, each and every steps now uh, i'm sure you all know warren buffett is one of the most successful investor in the world uh, i think he is the seventh uh, wealthiest person in, in the world maybe after the, the divorce of the Bill Gates, I don't know where his rank uh, is now, but uh, as per my uh, information, he's the seventh, and he has a net worth of 78.9 billion as of August 2020, like as of last year. Now he says that, he says that, do not say what is left after Spain, but spend what is left after saving. Now, this is the main uh, motto that we use in saving. Now, when we talk about a saving mindset, we are talking about pre-planned saving percentage rate that can be applied in our future incomes. It's not about, well, I mean, uh, as a tradition, people think that saving means, I mean, you get some, then you spend some, then the difference can be saved. No. When we talk about a saving mindset, we're saying that you will pre-plan it, pre-calculate your income, and I mean, pre -know, you know your income, you already know your income, then you pre-plan the expenses, then you will live by the, the plan, the budget that you set, and then uh, set aside the percentage, the saving percentage for your personal goal. So how do you do that? There are steps. The first step that you will do for saving is you have to break your earnings. How much is your take-home pay? You have to know that. How much is your home tech pay? Or how much is your net income? I mean, when we talk about your net income, we're saying, for example, if you're an employee of a certain organization or a certain company, then that company has a salary. I mean, the salary is a gross salary, but with that gross salary, there are some deductions, like, for example, taxes, and if you're into pensions or retirement deductions, something like that, then you have to know your net home tech pay. That's the first step. Now, second step, second step here is, uh, I mean, here you know your uh, average income. Now, second, second step is you have to keep a track of your finances. Here, when we talk about when we talk about uh, keeping a track of your finances, we are saying that you have to keep a track of the inflows and the outflows of your money. 
I mean, the average inflow and the average outflow of your income. Now, in doing so, in doing so, you will know the inflows and the outflows. Now, the second step will come about budgeting. I mean, we talk about budgeting a while ago. So, you have to identify and list out the expenses for the month and uh, you have to know the avoided, the, the avoidable and non-avoidable expenses and then you have to know how much on average can you save by the, according to your budget. I mean, uh, when you do that, as I said, if the difference between your, your income and your expenses positive, I mean a larger positive number, well, you're okay, then what needs to be done is you have to maintain that one. If it is negative, I mean, that's not good. That means you're living with the loan. So if it is zero, then you're living with all your income and that's not also good. So you have to do something about that. Now, after making a budget, if there are some dates, loans, then make sure that you can pay them because uh, making, I mean, living with debts and loans will increase your expenses because you will have to have a loan payment expenses. But uh, paying that one and finishing up that one will give you um, some, 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 some relief for your expenses so that you can uh, save more. Now after that, the fifth step is you have to consider in making more money than your salary. How could you make more money? As I said earlier, then how could you maximize your income? The one thing that you can maximize your income is converting your hobbies into a habit that can create an income and always consider in building a multiple income stream. I mean, you have to consider in finding multiple income sources. I know it's very difficult in, a, in, a, in, in, uh, in an economy like the African economy with uh, a very uh, limited and challenging economy, but still there are opportunities you have to uh, read and explore and find some ways to find uh, some other additional multiple sources because it's one way to reduce the expenses and it is another way to maximize the income in any ways you're 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 you're, you're getting a larger positive difference between your income and expense that can be used for a saving and after saving that you can use it for your uh, for your goal for your uh, ideas for your entrepreneurial ideas now uh, the the sixth step that we will see is when we talk about saving please please understand this I mean, after you get the money and put it in your pocket, it is very difficult to save it, okay? Because there are, I mean, a lot of ways that we can spend it again. But we can use an automated mechanism. I mean, you can automate the savings from your salary. I mean, you need to find a way, a direct way that can you save from getting instead of getting the incomes to you and then putting to your saving account you need to find a way to use uh, an automation technique that can uh, directly send from your income account to your saving account i mean you you should set up a direct deposit into your saving account from your income account uh, especially for uh, saving for a long long term goal now after that number, step number seven is you need to have consistency 
you need to have a consistency on your earnings. I mean, how much should you should you save in each month? You need to know that. How much is your, I mean, on average savings? So for that, you need to allocate to your essential expenses. Those are fixed expenses. These are non-avoidable expenses. And you need to allocate some to your optional spendings. You may have some optional spendings. I mean, if you get some more, then you can use, and you need to allocate to your savings also. Then do, in doing so, you should uh, have some saving technique. These are the seven steps that you can use in doing, uh, in doing uh, saving. In, uh, these are the steps. Now, in continuation, the last, the last concept that we'll, we'll talk about in this uh, mini class is all about the, the rule that we can use in doing saving. Now, there are a lot of techniques, a lot of ways that you can use to do saving. One way is the balanced money formula, which we call it the 15, 13, 20 rule. Now, here, what you will do is you will allow to 50% of your net income to your needs. I mean, these are essential expenses. These are expenses like groceries, for housing, utilities, and much more. These are expenses that you should, I mean, these are your needs. And then you need to leave 30% of your income for your wants. I mean, these are, uh, I mean, this is the money that you entitled to spend, I mean, for your wants, but this is somehow optional. And now you should commit 20% of your income to save it to your debt payments or to loan payments. Now, the trick is here. I know it's very difficult to leave fifth, only half of your income for your needs. And I mean, spend like one third of your income for your wants. But what you will do is, if by that month, if it is, if your needs exceeds, I mean, fifteen percent of your expenses, I mean, you can take some amount from your wants and I mean, reduce your wants. For example, if your needs is like sixty-five percent, then you will use sixty-five percent of your income for your needs. And then the rest 50%, 1.50% for your wants. That means you will adjust between your want and your needs. You can play an adjustment there. But 20% of your income will be a saving. Now the trick here it says that you should live by 80% of your income and save 20% of your income for your future investment, for your future plan. Now, it may look, I mean, small in numbers, but I mean, for, for, for uh, an income which is small, if you think about 20% of it, it may give you some uh, discouragement. But what you will do is, you can sell that 20% and use to generate more income. An example can be used like this. You can use the 20% of your saving in developing your hobbies to a habit, a habit or in, in developing your hobbies to be uh, an income generator. Or you can use the 20% of your saving for some mortgage payment or for uh, uh, for your for furthering your education or in investing you can invest it in yourself i mean the first investment that should be considered is investing in yourself before you invest in your business before you invest in your ideas you have to invest in yourself and invest in yourself educate yourself and then develop your way of understanding the business, understanding the economics, understanding the finance, and understanding the market is the first one. And it's a 
crucial one. So after understanding that one, after investing in yourself, then whenever you invest on yourself, for, for example, if you invest more on your education, then you will be needed by more companies or your income. If you're an employee, then your income will increase. Or if you're an entrepreneur, whenever you invest on yourself and I mean educate yourself, then you will you will you will have a very good understanding and you will have a, a, a much a much larger perspective of uh, understanding your ideas from the market, from the finance, from the economics, and from the global perspectives and whenever you invest on yourself and try to uh, build uh, a bond or a relationship with other uh, young uh, enthusiastic uh, entrepreneurs then you are uh, clearing a path for your ideas to develop and to, 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 to uh, be a shining star now enough about the uh, advices and everything so conclusion is you have to be uh, a pre-planned person i mean you need to know your income and you need to pre-plan your expenses you need to focus on the fixed expenses or the uh, uh, non avoidable expenses and you need to sacrifice you want us so that you can have a better uh, future in the future uh, that's one thing second thing is you need to be you need to uh, live by a budget by a plan you need to have a plan and on that budget on that plan you need to set a goal you need to set a financial goal you need to know what are your financial goals what are your short-term goals and what are your uh, long-term goals you need to know them and then you have to uh, try to, to to meet that goals to achieve your objectives uh, I mean saving somehow it, it looks difficult but as I said saving is not something that you do it after you're spending but rather saving is something which is a mindset that you should create and you should uh, do it before you get the earnings before you get your incomes you know your incomes then you calculate your expenses and then you uh, decide on how much percent of your income that you'll save and there are different ways and techniques one of the way is the 15 13 20 rule that you can use it i mean you can adjust the percentage as per your uh, inconvenience as per your convenience but i mean you need to have some percentage of uh, saving at the end of your the period or at the end of the month or at the end of the year that you can uh, use it to develop to invest it in yourself to invest it on your on your, your on, on your idea or to invest it on someone's idea and generate more income and live a better life uh, so this is all about uh, the mini class about personal finance and saving. I hope you get some something about it. So I will see you next time in different other concepts. Uh, so if you have any questions, comments, or any ideas that we can that you think that I should be uh, involved. Uh, then you will get uh, my contact us on the Telegram channel. Other than that, uh, I mean, uh, I'm always ready to know uh, new people to, to discuss new ideas. And for that, I'll be happy to make more friends uh, by using this opportunity. Uh, I thank you very much. And uh, my name is Samuel, I'm from Ethiopia. Thank you.